Now, here, I'm actually going to combine number 4 and 5 together here, since they are um, so close to each other here. Um, here we're basically looking at equilibrium and essentially non-equilibrium. And what we're going to need to do first is start off with what is actually equilibrium. Equilibrium would be where there's no tendency for change. Basically, we're at a stable point. Unless something odd happens, um, we're going to be basically stay at that point. And what we're going to focus on is an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. You're going to see me just using the shorthand EQM to stand for equilibrium rather than writing it out entirely. So here's my quantity. This is the phone's market. Here's my price. Here's my supply curve, which is upward sloping. Here's my demand curve, which is downward sloping. This is the supply of phones. This is the demand for phones. And again, obviously your eyes are attracted to this point where the two meet, giving us a quantity, let's call it quantity star and giving us a price star. That's our equilibrium. Basically, if nothing else adjusts in this market, we're going to kind of stabilize around that price, and we're going to stabilize around that quantity. Now, what happens when we're not in equilibrium? Essentially, there will be changes. As long as something doesn't prevent, um, there's not a law that prevents things from changing, things will change. Let's look at a situation where I have a shortage, which we can understand in a very informal way as too much being bought. If too much is being bought, the way that that looks is something like the price being way down here. Basically, it's because the price is too low. Now, if the price is too low, the question then that you have to ask yourself is, what do firms do when everyone is buying everything? At this price, let's call it price P1. At price P1, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. How do I know that? Because at price P1, that's where my quantity demanded is. And at price P1, this is where my quantity supplied is. So quantity demanded is greater than qu <coughs> quantity supplied. That's our shortage. <coughs> So again, the question is, is how do firms react? They typically raise prices. <coughs> and as they increase the price, what we see here is that we're going to move along the supply curve, and we're going to move 
along the demand curve. As the price rises, quantity demanded will fall, quantity supplied will increase. How do we know that? That's our law of demand. That's from PEMCAST number two. Why is, as the price going up, why is quantity supplied increasing? That's our law of supply. And so what you see here is that basically the market fixes itself. If the price is too low, just because you made a mistake and there's nothing else stopping the price from changing, the fact that there's a shortage will cause the firms to raise their price. And as they increase the price, you're going to keep raising it and raising it and raising it until they reach the equilibrium. Because what happens then, as you see here, is that the difference between these two curves keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning that the amount of the shortage is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until there's no shortage anymore. The other way that this could exist is with a surplus. And that would be too much being sold. <coughs> we can draw a rather similar picture here with supply and demand. <coughs> Again, now our problem is that the price is too high. And because the price is too high, then what we see here is that at price P1, let's call this price P1, at price P1, the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. How do firms react? firms react by lowering the price. And as firms lower the price, as the price goes down, <coughs> the surplus amount gets smaller and smaller. As, uh, just to keep this on the same page here and keep this a little easy here, I'm just going to write this over here. As the price falls, the quantity demanded increases, and the quantity supplied falls. And how do we know that? That would be our law of demand. And this would be our law of supply. Sorry for kind of squeezing this on the same page, but I think it makes it a little bit easier to understand. I shouldn't have left that space up there. Um, but um, what you can see here, just as you saw for shortage, is that the market fixes itself until it gets to the equilibrium.